everybody. Thank you for being here tonight. We are on our week number three of our informed transformation journey. I want to thank everybody very much for being here this evening. Um, of course, we just watched a, a new video that was just released at National Convention by Nature Sunshine, uh, not this last weekend, but the weekend before. And it's a, about a program that piggybacks onto what inform as to what we're doing right now. I don't want so much for you guys to be concerned about the last part of that, except for some of the results that you were hearing people have. Um, but just really the beginning of that uh, particular video that really talks about how we have such a toxic world around us and how the stress that we have and things that we eat and things that we uh, surround ourselves with really increase a higher level of toxicity that really does uh, manipulate the good, healthy microbiome in our gut. And of course, tonight's uh, module is on losing weight by losing toxicity. And even though I have stressed with everybody that losing weight is not our primary focus, weight and toxicity do work hand in hand. And we're gonna learn a little bit more about how that works tonight as we um, discuss module number three in our Inform Manual. Um, so some of the other things that we're gonna be doing tonight, of course, we're gonna be talking about toxicity in our environment, toxicity in our personal care items, uh, toxicity in some of our foods, all the things that can create more of that toxic load on our body where it's not functioning optimally. So we're gonna really be covering all of those angles tonight. We're also gonna be making some smoothies tonight. Um, I've got some greens that I brought in with some cherries. So I'm gonna show some of you who are wanting to um, get more greens in, how you can actually add that to your smoothies and it doesn't really disrupt the flavor that much if you add the right things along with that. So that's something else we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about our SMART goals that we had for the week also. I wanna make sure that everybody is setting that SMART goal each week uh, and, and going along with that foundation because it's so important for us to make sure that every week we have a little focus because every week builds on each week. I want to remind everybody, in fact, I might not have told this group yet, it takes 21 days to create a habit. It takes 90 days to create a lifestyle. So that's why I'm really pushing on making sure we set those foundational SMART goals every single week because that's what's going to help us get the habit in, which is going to help us get to the lifestyle, which is the end result of where we'll be at at the end of the 13 weeks on this particular program. Um, so um, how's everybody doing tonight? Doing all right? A little cooler than last week. <laughs> Not much, but a little bit. <laughs> I can at least have my hair down tonight. <laughs> That's a little bit better. Um, so one thing I want to make sure that I focus on um, is, 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 is another little saying that I like to share is love yourself enough to be healthy. And I think that's one thing that some of us need to be reminded at at the beginning of this program that even though it may seem really hard on some days to eat what you're supposed to eat or to get those shakes in or get the supplements in or to get out there and get some exercise, whatever it may be, remember at those times that you are loving yourself by making one more step towards being healthy. And as soon as we uh, get through a few more weeks, it won't seem so hard anymore. It'll be second nature for you to do so. I also want to start off with another little quote that Hippocrates have had. Um, and uh, I'll tell you what that is right now. Hippocrates, way back over 2,000 years ago, said that quality of life starts with awareness. It allows for a greater choice and the start of relationship with truth. And I think that can go in a lot of different angles. We can talk about food and truth. We can talk about our environment and truth. We can talk about our spirituality and truth. We can talk about all sorts of things in truth. But it all starts with creating more awareness. And our quality of life increases when we create more awareness. And that's one of the reasons why I like the tagline, Lifestyle Awareness for a Healthy Life, for this particular program, because I really think that it fits perfectly. So I told, told you guys last week we're going to start talking about eliminations this week, right? We're going to get a little bit more personal on how that all works. And so I'm going to start off with a little bit of a quip here. When your gut is healthy, you produce little gas. When your gut is healthy, your stools will not kill somebody in the next room. When your gut is healthy, you are typically happier. Okay? Very important for us to remember these things. And of course, if we are challenging our microbiome balance to be more balanced with that good bacteria, the microbiome is stronger than the bad bacteria, 
We're going to expect a battle to happen. And we talked about this a little bit last week, but I want to make sure that you're prepared because sometimes we do have digestive upsets going through this whole system. We'll have more gas, our eliminations will move around a little bit more frequent, less frequent, you know, less consistency, more consistency, all sorts of different things happen. And that's okay. But I just want to remind you, please talk to me if you feel like something is outside of the box. All right? I just want to make sure that you are not giving up on accelerating to the proper balance. So, I know most of you got the email, right? I know Lynn didn't, of course. But we finally all got the emails. Um, so on the email, I had said something special. Does anybody remember what it was? About how you could get a little ticket for a special drawing? You got it? What is it, Regina? The smart bag. Smart goals? Yes, yeah, smart goals. Share your smart goal, and I will give you a ticket for a special drawing we're having. All right? So, you want to share yours? What was your smart goal for the week, Regina? Eat healthier. Eat healthier. Lay off the sweets. Lay off the sweets. Yes. That's a good one. <laughs> okay? Who else wants to share? I'll give you a ticket. <laughs> Drink more water. Great. Okay, who else? Ethan. Drink more water, lay off the sweets. Great goal, man. Thank you. Okay, who else? Lynn? Start doing some weight training? Okay. And weights, well that's good. That's good. We need to have that resistant training going. Anybody else want to share their smart goal for the week? Eddie? Start on that bicycle. All right. Did you, did you get to do that? I started. You started though. That's good. That's good. Anybody else want to share? That it? Okay, we'll draw a special winner here in a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to module number three. We're going to be on page number 26 of our informed participation participant jur uh, journal. I might need that water. Wet my lips a little bit here. things that we need to be concerned about in a toxic world. The food we eat, the water we drink, and the air we breathe. These are the things that we really need to be concerned about moving forward in this toxic world. Since the mid-20th uh, mid century, the planet has manufactured chemicals at astounding rates. Tens of thousands of these chemicals have been created and released into the environment. In the United States, we allow more toxic chemicals in our foods, in our lawn care, in our detergents, in our house cleaning uh, products, you name it. We allow more of them than all of the other nations in the UN do. For some reason, in this particular country, it has to hurt somebody before it's going to actually be taken off the market. They don't do any product testing for the most part with most of these chemicals. So we are exposed more than the average person across the world just because of the country that we live in. It's really important to know this because we need to be aware. Chemicals can be found in dust, vapor, fumes, mist, solids, liquids, there are chemicals in the water we drink and many of the foods that we eat. We literally bathe in chemicals when we take a bath or even take a shower. These toxins are wrecking havoc on the microbiomes of our gut. They literally get into our pores, get into our lungs, get into our digestive system and disrupt the harmony of our gut microbiome. And they cause them to short circuit, not have the foods that they need, and then they also, in addition to that, will create more bad bacteria 
to be in competition with the good bacteria in our gut. The other things that we're exposed to a lot is plastics. We're going to talk more about plastics when we get to our hormonal, uh, not hormonal, but hormone <laughs> module. <laughs> and uh, we'll learn more about plastics at that time, but something I do want to bring up. Plastics are another place where we get constant chemical uh, reaction from. Our bodies are membranes and we are living organisms. Which is the good news because that means our bodies can heal from these chemicals. But first we need to be aware and we need to detox and we need to make changes as we go forward. You guys remember in the intro classes I shared with you the fish tank analogy. Literally our gut is like this unhealthy fish tank full of unwanted algae. We got plastic cups, we got some kind of metal rod hanging out in here. You know this is not oxygenated water either. This is what our guts look like for 95% of us walking this planet, especially in this country. And our whole goal doing the n Metabolic Age Transformation Program is to clean our gut up, is to clean our fish tank up. You can see these fish here, they don't feel so good. These are representations of your good, healthy microbiome. This is the good guys, but yet they're sick, they're tired, they got a headache, they just don't feel good. They're on their way to death. And that does not help us feel any better as a whole organism as each one of us are. One of the things that we're gonna be focusing on and understanding in this particular module is that we are gonna be doing the three R's. But tonight we're gonna to be focusing on the reset, AKA remove. And that's what we're gonna be um, addressing eliminating things from our body that negatively affect our health of our microbiome and our overall health things such as environmental toxicities chemicals pollutants accumulated waste in the colon even if you have the proper amount of eliminations on a regular daily basis I can pretty much guarantee you there's some probably some little pockets of some fecal matter that's been hiding up in there okay it's normal an overabundance of food, beverages that promote inflammatory processes, and the wrong kind of gut bacteria. So this is where we work on resetting and removing, and we start that tonight by understanding and creating a larger awareness around that. One of the things I like to bring up at this point is our, uh, is our uh, um, skin care products. We have to be really, really careful. The perfumes that we use, the shampoos, the conditioners, uh, all the different body lotions. I mean, we literally saturate ourselves on a regular daily basis with all sorts of chemicals. We need to start not allowing ourselves to um, be exposed to those chemicals. We need to switch some of the chemical or some of the personal care items that we're using. You want to stay away from things that have alcohol in them, especially body lotions. Can anybody tell me what alcohol does? Dries you up. So if you, have a, if you have a body lotion that has alcohol in it, what do you think it's going to do? It's going to dry you up. So you're going to put that nice little silky body lotion on and it feels really good for maybe an hour or two, but then all of a sudden, guess what? You need to put on more. I think there's a reason they do that that way, right? So we need to stay away from the alcohol. We need to stay away from sodium lauryl sulfates. Sodium lauryl sulfates are a major chemical actually linked to cancer in some incident incidences. Really highly linked to men and women even losing their hair. And we see a lot of this in our shampoos. Because it disrupts, guess what? The microbiome of our scalp and is a chemical. We actually have living organisms in our scalp, just like on our hands, eyebrows, everywhere. And when we use these chemicals, we literally disrupt the healthy pH balance and that microbiome in that area. Another thing we need to stay away... Yes, Eddie? What would be the... Um, an example of... I'll get to that. No worries. <laughs> Nettie, can you hear me? Sodium lauryl sulfates. I didn't want to ask you that. I was trying to figure out where you actually the relationship between my food and color or potential. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I will. I, I wanted to ask you in the restaurant. Okay. <laughs> um, so, 
The other thing we want to stay away from is fragrances. Fragrances can be any range of all sorts of different chemicals and things that we don't want. Would you get the, um, the, the three things I have in the bathroom, the soap, the uh, hand gel, the spray, and uh, the cleaner. We want to stay away from fragrances because fragrances can be made with a wide variety of things. Did you know one of your, nat even if it says natural fragrances, because did you know that horse pee is actually a natural fragrance? They actually have used that in products when they say natural fragrance. Mm -hmm. Yes, I said horse pee. So you really want to be careful when it says fragrances and it doesn't tell you. If you're going to use something with a smell to it, make sure they're telling you what it is. Like this, for instance, is a lavender hand soap. You want to actually be able to look on the ingredient list and see lavender. You don't want to see just fragrance, because that could be anything, all right, even if it says natural. Another thing we want to stay away from is parabens. Parabens is another chemical as well. Um, it's made from a wax residue, but it could actually be very harmful to our skin, and what it does, it can clog up our pores. And our skin is literally a breathing organism. It needs to breathe. And when you're putting on parabens, it actually doesn't allow your skin to breathe and be able to have that oxygen exchange that it needs to be healthy as well. All right? I also have a, um, another company that I work with um, where we work with these face products in particularly that really help to increase the skin barrier. I've been learning a lot in the last few months about the skin barrier that we have. And one of the reasons we get sick is because literally these toxins or immune uh, bacteria, germs, whatever, gets through our skin barrier. And when it gets through our skin barrier, that's when we can get sick and not feel well anymore. So we really want to pay attention to the things we're putting on our bodies. Deodorants is another really big one. Did you know that there are two causes primarily in this country for breast cancer? One of them being underwire bras because we don't allow the circulation to the breast tissue, which is where the lymphatic system is primarily located at in the upper air chest area. And the second one is aluminum that's in our deodorants. When you don't allow yourself to perspire, you don't allow your body to detox. Perspiration is normal. It should happen. All right, that's one of our, we have five eliminative channels as a female and four as a male. And one of those for both organ or for both sexes is the skin. The skin is an eliminative channel. And if we don't allow ourselves to sweat, that means those toxins that would normally be flushed out with that water and perspiration, guess what? Stay inside. So when we wear all these anti-perspirants, we actually suppress our own body's natural ability to release these toxins. And that's not counting the aluminum that's in these and all sorts of other different chemicals that's in our deodorants. We really need to be aware of this. We have more and more high incidence even of men having breast cancer these days. Now they may not be wearing the underwire bras, but they are wearing the antiperspirants. Okay? And that's just as harmful for them. So it's something we need to take um, heed and, and action on. We really need to look at using as natural, clean, uh, products as possible. I've got one more to show you guys. <coughs> our cleaning products are another issue that we have. A lot of our cleaning um, products are really, really horrible for us. They actually put more chemicals in our environment. These little plug-ins that you put into the wall, these air fresheners, these things you spray in the air to make things smell fresh. It's chemicals. If you have anybody that's allergic to smells or chemicals or allergies at any level, you need to look at these things because these things can actually cause allergic reactions and we're not even aware of it. Even our detergents that we use to wash, to wash our clothes. Those detergents literally seep into our skin when we wear the clothes that we wash them in. 
people, I've worked with people over the years that have rashes, and then we take away their laundry soap, and we replace it with a clean one, and their rashes go away. It happens. So we really want to aim to reduce our chemical toxicity exposure in as much as we can. There's some things we just can't really change. We can't really change the air. But you can change what you're putting on your body and what you're surrounding yourself with on a regular basis. Um, Avalon is one of my favorite brand names. Now I will tell you in personal care items, you will not see a whole lot of them say organic. Reason being is because most of them use water for the first ingredient and you cannot classify water as organic. So that's not a bad thing. You just need to read your labels, okay? Avalon's one of the few companies out there that actually can say organic because of the constitution of the ingredient list, which we'll talk about more when we get into your food pantry. All right, so um, if you can get something organic, that's always best. But the biggest thing is, is to look for things without the sodium oral sulfates, without the, without the alcohol, without the parabens, and without that mysterious natural fragrance. Really want to stay away from those things as much as possible. And you can read the labels right here. Okay? Um, Avalon also does shampoos, does conditioners, and body lotions, and all sorts of other things. They're not the only company. It's just one of the companies that I like a lot. I used to carry it way back in the day when I was downtown Austin with my, uh, with my store. I was one of the first stores to actually start carrying it when they started putting it out. So I, I'm just kind of a little, little uh, excited about that. So when we talk about things we put in our air, I want to show you this. This is seventh generation. Who's heard of seventh generation? Okay, so seventh generation is a really good, they actually, when I first heard about them, they had diapers. When I wasn't doing cloth diapers with my babies, I was doing seventh generation diapers, okay? They're a very clean company, always have been very clean, and I think this is really interesting. Kills 99.99% of bacteria and viruses. Who else does that? Anybody know? Lysol. Lysol! <laughs> I cannot stand Lysol. If you, sp if you spray Lysol in my house on the way other end, I can smell it. I mean, it gives me a headache. I cannot handle it. Never have. So happy when they put this out. We have options. We have options for healthier sprays and cleaners. We just got to increase our awareness and look for them. It's very important. Even like cleaning your bathroom or countertops, Greenworks is one I just picked up. Now, the only thing I'm not excited about is made by Clorox, and I'm really careful with companies that you know do other products. But I mean, it's a 97% naturally derived all-purpose cleaner, original scent. Really be careful with your scents. But you know another really good cleaner, vinegar and baking soda. Excellent, excellent combination. You can use it to clean your toilet, to clean your sinks, clean your countertops, all sorts of things. Mop your floor and it's natural and it doesn't have the chemical toxicity that you would normally see with all these other products and it's cheaper. When you think about it, when you buy okay, a kitchen counter spray, a dish soap, a mopping liquid, a toilet cleaner, uh, I mean the list goes on and on, right? Think about how much money you're spending on all these chemicals. If you can reduce that you're doing much better not only for your environment yourself, but you're also doing much better for your pocketbook as well. One of the new things that Nature Sunshine just came out with, and they just released this last week, is this Essential Shield Multi-Purpose Concentrated Cleaner. And I'm really excited about this because you can use it for your laundry, you can use it to wash your dishes, you can use it to clean sinks, mop, whatever you want to do with it, and it has Essential Shield in it. Essential Shield is a specific, natural, combination of essential oils. Has anybody ever heard of Thieves? Yes. This is the equivalent of Thieves with a little extra boost. Okay? And anyways, smells great. If you guys want to try a smell, you sure most certainly can. But this is another really good option just from the company that we're primarily working with with the Inform company or with the Inform program. So we've got lots of options out there. Deodorants, uh, you can use a salt block. Um, I personally like a brand name called EO. And they do like a lavender and a velveteer, uh, different types of um, spray-ons. Sometimes people don't like to spray on. Some people want something more thick. You could, I mean, there's all sorts of different options out there. We just need to start looking for deodorants. The other thing I will tell you, though, is if when you sweat, you have a high smell, 
that's a lot of toxins coming out, and we want that stuff to come out. Remember when we talked about the liquid chlorophyll last week? This is really good also to help clear the blood and help clear things out. It's a body deodorizer as well, the chlorophyll is. So not only does it help your kidneys and your liver and your skin, but it's literally going to help deodorize your body as well. So this is something you can put in. And it'll help you get to the point where you can get by with natural deodorants. A lot of people tell me, oh, I can't wear natural deodorants. They don't work. Well, they don't work because you got a lot of toxicity coming out. So we need to work at where that's coming from first. Okay? Any questions on chemicals? And personal care items. Did I cover everything? Shampoos, conditioners, lotions. Okay. So, um... Those are the big things that I wanted to really uh, cover. Now, of course, when we watch the uh, watch the video, I mean, you can just see the pollution that's in the air. There's all sorts of chemicals we're getting on a regular basis. Mercury is a really big one. Lead's a really big one. Another really big one that a lot of us are not familiar with is glyphosate. Does anybody know what glyphosate is? Roundup. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. I learned a lot about glyphosate, and I already thought I knew a lot, but I didn't know as much as I know now, which is getting more and more. Glyphosate, which is in Roundup, which is put on a lot of our conventionally grown food products, our vegetables and our fruits, all right? If it's, if it's GMO, then it's got Roundup on it, by the way. Glyphosate literally opens up the doors for the chemical toxins that you already have in your body, opens those doors up and, and, and like multiplies them by an immense amount. So if you have a little bit of lead and then you put glyphosate in, bam, now you've got a lot of lead. It literally opens up the blood-brain barrier for toxins to get into your brain. Glyphosate does this. And you tell me we don't have a slow poison going on. Anyway, I'll leave that with that. But you really need to be thinking about all of these different things as we're moving forward. And, and really creating a really healthy environment for ourselves and reducing the toxicity. We need to focus on controlling the toxins that we are in control of. All right. Page number 27. Let me make sure I don't get ahead of myself. All right. So, speaking of glyphosate, let's look at page number seven, 27. Food for thought. Typically, fast foods are stuffed with dangerous trans fats, processed sugars, chemical additives, and of course, I added on here, food colorings. Did you know that they did a study with children when they ate oh, three, four, four hot dogs a week, they had a, like an 80% higher chance of leukemia than children who didn't eat that many hot dogs in a week? Because there's lots of food coloring. We'll talk about this more when we get to our food specifically, but I just wanted to leave you with that. That really, one, the children are really getting a lot of these food colorings, and it's really, really bad for them. Like I said, we'll cover that more later. I just want to make you start to be aware, okay? Even those who are eating from their own kitchens are vulnerable to salt, sugar, white flour, unhealthy fats, preservatives, and chemicals are all added to our food in the form of pesticides, herbicides, Fertilizers, GMOs, Roundup are all common tools used in modern farming now. Very common. We are in a mass production of food. In order to create mass production, it needs to be controlled more, and they do this with the chemical farming that's taking place. Any food that is not in its original state, such as lunch meats, means it's going to be likely made full of chemicals. So you need to think about where your food came from when it's on your plate. When you look at your plate and you don't recognize it, and or you think about how did it get here and you can even imagine all the processes that it was made into and had heating and reprocessing and grinding and remixing and whatever, right? It's not in its natural state anymore. The divine creator gave us foods in its natural state for a reason. It's because it's highly nutritious for these bodies we've been given. So we therefore need to fuel it in the way we were meant to fuel it. I mean, if you've got a diesel truck, 
You don't pull up to the pumps and put gasoline in it, right? Well, yeah, if you want to drive it, right? And I'm most certain that all of you are here because you want to continue driving your bodies, correct? So we need to think about the fuel that we're putting in our bodies and what it's gone through. But if you don't recognize it from its natural state, you need to take a double, double, double look at that and really think about what you're doing and what you're eating. That's one of the reasons why lunch meats are so bad because it goes through a lot. I mean, think about white bread. I mean, if you can like literally put bread in the cupboard for three weeks and nothing happens to it, that's scary. And I'm sure some of you may have seen the McDonald's movie where they actually put like a Happy Meal or some kind of Big Mac or something. And, the, and then, I mean, it, all it did was dry up after a year. It didn't even, didn't even break down and mold and uh, any of that. Think about what it's gone through. Think about where it comes from before you put it into your mouth. We've got regularly commercially grown food versus organic versus sustainably grown. So, you know, obviously I'm going to say that organic is generally the best. There is a little bit of a, a, a catch to that, but we're not going to cover that in this class. That's something we have to talk about at a later time. But organic generally is the best option. And we're actually, I've actually got a, a sheet here that tells you uh, your good, uh, the, the vegetables and fruits that you always want to get organic and the ones you don't have to be so concerned about, but we'll give it to you. But there's also other things such as sustainably grown. Sustainably grown basically means what they're doing is they are using um, their own resources on their farm. Uh, maybe they have chickens and they use their chicken poop for fertilizer. You know, they're, they're using things that they don't have to go out and buy somewhere else. You know, maybe they started a, a ladybug uh, house. That's what we use on our alfalfa field is we use ladybugs for pest control. So sustainably grown is also a really good word. Another one is just to know your farmers. If you can go to farmers markets if you've got somebody who's growing food and you know them and you can ask them questions about what they're using um, to grow their food, that's another really good way too, especially when it comes to meats. If you can buy your meats from somebody you know and trust, it's way better than going to the grocery store and getting them. They use food colorings and dyes, even in meats, to make them look pretty. When you think about it, I mean, if you've ever bought meat like from a neighbor who like butchered their own cow, Right versus what you buy. I mean, the meat itself looks different because they, they're not treated. They don't treat it like they do in the grocery store, just to make it look pretty. It doesn't need to look pretty. It just needs to be healthy. Okay? So we really need to be thinking about our food. Uh, learning to eat greens to ensure long life. It ensures a healthy gut microbiome. Your greens, how many greens are we supposed to be eating per day? Does anybody remember how many ounces? Five, good job. Okay, five ounces of greens per day. Or more than that, yes. Greens literally feed your good bacteria. That is the food your good bacteria eats. So we need to make sure we're getting in as many greens as we possibly can right now. Something else that I learned over a convention that I thought was a really good statistic, it takes five times more good nutritionally food when you are working on building and recovering from an illness or a disease or a health issue than it does to maintain. So literally, you need to eat five more times healthy food to get over and get a health issue or get to a healthy point as it does just to maintain. That's a lot of food. That's a lot more nutrition. That's why we're doing the shakes, and that's why we're doing some of the other things that we're doing on this program, because it takes a lot of really healthy nutrition to get us over that hump where we can just maintain, okay? Eating greener is greater. Page number 28, 2012 study published in the National Toxology Program suggests that chemical exposure may alter fat cells. Did you know that your fat cells Hold on to toxins. They are storage tanks for toxins. When you are born, you have X amount of fat cells. It's not like you gain more and more and more as you get older. When you go through puberty, you actually have your set number of fat cells. Whether you're skinny or whether you're large, you still have the same number of fat cells. Fat cells are like balloons, okay? When you blow them up full of toxins, Guess what happens to your body? 
is larger. When we release those toxins and get rid of them, guess what happens? You get smaller. You don't get rid of fat cells. You just reduce the size. When you've got so much chemical toxicity going on in your body, and your body cannot keep up, and it's just going to find a place to put it, it finds a fat cell, stuffs it in, and then think about it. I like to use this analogy. Think about that closet you have at your house where you just put everything and anything because you don't know what to do with it. You may, may want to need it later, you may need it later, you may want to keep it, you don't really know. It's one of those, I'll just deal with it later things because I don't have time right now. So you get it out of the closet and just stuff it in. And it gets to the point where you got to shut the door really fast, right? <laughs> because you have so much stuff coming in, it's all going to come out at you. That's what happens with your fat cells. It's the same idea. So that's why when we say losing weight by losing toxicity, really that's what it is. If you feel like you need to lose weight, then you need to work on losing toxicity. And of course, even if you're a skinny fat person, we still need to reduce toxicity, okay? So understanding that analogy is really, really important because that will help us get through and understanding what's happening. The other thing you need to understand is when those fat cells start getting smaller, where do those toxins go? Where? To your colon, bloodstream, all sorts of places. And you can actually have toxic related symptoms. This is why when people do cleanses, they actually feel toxic related symptoms. Headaches, flu aches, low energy, I just don't feel, I feel icky. I had that last week. I started a new uh, detox program, the Purify 2.0 that they were talking about. I started last Monday and Thursday and Friday, or Wednesday and Thursday were rough, were rough. <laughs> but it was good because I knew that those toxins were being stirred up to be released. So this is one of the reasons why we're going to talk about cleansing tonight is because we need to have output for these toxins. If you're not eliminating frequently enough, oh, I'm sorry, you probably need that. <laughs> Oh, Ethan, I'm sorry. Here. <laughs> I took all the bathroom stuff. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I'm standing there doing this. Good thing you're going to read body language. <laughs> so, anyways, we need to make sure that we're providing that travel out space. And that's why cleansing and detoxing is really important as we're reducing, reducing our weight and reducing toxicity. Um, the other things, of course, we were talking about greens. I kind of went off on a tangent on fat, so let me go back to that. So the other thing that greens do, they work as a fiber. We've got several different types of fibers, but greens actually are like a broom-like fiber. They don't necessarily digest, but what they do is they sweep the colon. And that's one of the reasons why we need greens, is to help sweep the colon, like a broom, all right? We can add them, of course, to smoothies. We can add powdered greens. We can do all sorts of different things, and that's one of the reasons why the smoothie I'm making tonight is with some greens, so we can find another way to add those for people who want to do that. So foods to always buy, organic cleaner. All right, here, so I promised you guys this earlier. So this is what's called uh, the Clean 15. I keep wanting to have things in <laughs> So these are our fruits and vegetables, the Clean 15. They're, all, they're okay to purchase conventionally, meaning if you can't find it organically, then you're okay for the most part, all right? But the Dirty Dozen, you always want to make sure you purchase these clean. They need to be organic or sustainably grown or grown by somebody that you trust. Things such as strawberries and berries, they actually hold on to those chemicals and toxicity in the skin of their fruit. And then we eat that skin. And then we absorb that chemical toxicity along with that strawberry or that fruit. Anything that's soft and fleshy, we're going to generally see needs to be on the dirty dozen list, meaning we need to always purchase that organically. So this may help give you some ideas as if you're trying to work with a budget, what you can and can't do, um, this will help. Um, 
We've talked about why spending a bit more now saves dollars in the long run. I always like to look at food as your insurance. I know probably most everybody has insurance in here, but eating healthy is like insurance. If you don't want to be running back and forth to the doctor, if you want to feel good on the weekend so you can hang out with your children or your grandchildren, if you want to be able to have lots of energy to go on that vacation you and your spouse have been dreaming about for a long time, then you want to eat healthier because that's going to keep you ready to go. It's going to increase your quality of life. A lot of us don't realize the money that's spent on insurance and doctor's visits outweighs what we could be spending on healthier fruits and vegetables and foods for ourselves. So even though it may seem like a little bit more in the beginning, the long run it pays off. You're not having to take that prescription, and you're not having to take that prescription, another prescription for that prescription because the side effect from the first prescription, and then another, anyway, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? So let's stop the cycle before we get there and really concentrate on eating as clean as we can and realize it's insurance. It's insurance and a quality of life that we all would like to have. And when we increase our quality of life through the physical, we can start to increase the quality of our life through the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual as well, because it is all interconnected. We'll talk about that at a later date. Eating pure whole foods actually costs less than overly processed foods. I mean, if you like lunch meat, buy chicken, okay? Poach it and have it for the week and use that for your lunch meat. Just find ways to incorporate natural healthy food in as much as you can without all the nitrates and all the other things that are negative for our bodies. Yeah. I want the other day, and I thought it said no nitrates that it did. Yeah. But it did say something else like more hormones or whatever. But it smelled like fish. It was turkey meat, and it smelled like fish. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. interesting. No? Yeah. <laughs> I just Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just need to find options, and there's options. We just need to find them, and that's one of the reasons that's really cool about having a group. We can help each other out with that. Well, does does anybody or you know about the Enid Organic Store that's um, called Rowdy Stick Horse? Well, yes, yes. I taught my first classes at Rowdy Stick Horse. That's where and I met they Indian. have a lot of products and meat that are in the Rowdy Stick Horse right. in Indian uh, Village, Indian right there. Yeah. Yeah. And that they also have, um, they open up the farmhouse fresh yep. restaurant now. Yep. And it's very organic, fresh yep. foods. So there are some options. Yeah. 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 And then the so farm fresh yeah. place is up. What is that street? Hoover. Hoover. Yeah. So Rowdy Stiff Horse is great because they like to carry fresh produce. Mm -hmm. So fresh produce is something that you can get there that's clean. Jumbo's also has a section as well. Um, you can also, of course, get a lot of frozen products over here at Pearson's as well. They've got a lot of organics and really clean, uh, especially like your berries for your smoothies and things like that. So make sure you're looking at all the different options that you have because there are lots of different options for these clean, fresh foods. You just got to be a little bit more resilient about it and also be asking more as well. All right. Let's see, where are we at now? Okay, one other little handout that I did not give you guys earlier, which I'll give you guys now, is 30 ways you can poison yourself before breakfast. <laughs> yeah, 30 ways to poison yourself, and you can better bet there's all sorts of good stuff on here for you to learn about how all these different things affect us in such a negative way. The rest of the dead. So that's going to really help you understand all the things I'm talking about. Your toothpaste, everything. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It is. All right. So we're going to get to the fun part, my favorite subject. We're going to talk about poo. All right. I know you guys think that's funny. Honestly, on a clear note, that was one of my problems when I first uh, was being diagnosed with MS as I was eliminating once a week, and all the doctor's visits I went through, nobody ever told me there was anything wrong with that. And here I couldn't figure out why I had this big, huge, distended belly, just in, not even after eating anything, which is all of a sudden during the day, I did this big, distended, distended belly, didn't even know that I was supposed to be eliminating more often. 
nobody ever talks about it, right? I mean, it's like it's supposed to be like this subject we just don't even talk about, but it's so important to our health. Mm -hmm. We need to be aware, we need to be okay with talking about it, understanding it, sharing it with our children, our grandchildren, and making sure that this is one way we can really ensure our health in the long term. We need to know what a healthy poo looks like, how often we should have it, and what it, and, 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 and all this, uh, the frequencies of it. So, the healthy gut, if you eat three meals a day, you should have, it, should have three uh, eliminations a day. It's a train-in, train-out theory. If you have breakfast, after breakfast you should get rid of breakfast from the day before. When you have lunch, you should be getting rid of lunch from the day before. When you have dinner, you should be getting rid of dinner from, guess what, the day before. How many times does a baby poop? Every time they eat, right? That's the correct way. We just don't realize it. Now, I'm not expecting everybody to have three poos a day. I don't even expect that for myself. I mean, that would be wonderful. But, I mean, that is the optimal amount, okay? So just so you guys understand that. You need to eliminate it at least once a day at minimum. If you are not a once a dayer, we need to work on that. That needs to get to be more frequent and consistent. Okay, it's very important. Because if you think about it, if you only have a morning poo, where did breakfast or what did dinner and lunch from the day before go? Who knows? Where is it? I don't know. All right? You need to think about it. Also, your poos should be, all right, about that big around. How many of you have ever looked in the toilet after your child or your grandchild's gone poo and you're like, how in the world did that come out of that child? They should be. I'd spike that, but I'm not right there. So basically not quite my fingers together. That's what it should be. That's what it should be. That's all. That's old. And it shouldn't hurt. It should have plenty of fiber in there where it just moves along with the rectal canal and it moves on out. It should have form. Okay? Not a pile. Form. All right? And guess how long? 18 inches long. That's approximately the length of the colon. You should literally be evacuating up to 18 inches long. Look at the video on Eddie real quick. <laughs> Should be 18 inches long. <laughs> Usually it wraps around. It can be in pieces. But it's not loose. It's not soup. Alright? It has form. And that's because of eating more fiber. That's because of fiber. You bet. When you eliminate, you're just not eliminating the residue of food, you're eliminating that fiber, you're eliminating bacteria that's died off, you're eliminating fats, you're eliminating all sorts of different things. And that's really important to have that kind of food. The other thing is it should be like a medium to dark brown color, it should be like this color. Shouldn't be green, shouldn't be yellow, shouldn't be black, okay? Or red. Needs to be this color. Or red. or red. Thank you. It should be this dark brown color. All right? It can break apart. That's fine. But that's what it's supposed to be every day. Easy peasy. In and out. Guess how many times you should wipe? Everybody's like, you're going to talk about that? Never. No. Once. Once or twice. Yep. Once or twice. I can tell you since being on this Purify, I'm using a lot less toilet paper. Because all that fiber and everything I'm getting in that. Yeah. Yeah. But you should only have to wipe once or twice. That's it. The jury is out on whether it should float or not. Oh, so we're not going to go with that right now. I'm not concerned about that. I'm more concerned about your frequency right now. Okay? <laughs> I've heard lots of different conflicting versions on that, so I'm not going to go there tonight. But that's what a poo should look like. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs>
So who here is a three times a day or anyone? Oh, it depends. Oh, really? Every time you eat? But is it formed? Mm -hmm. Good. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. It varies. Varies. reestablish themselves and self, self somewhere else. Now, I don't believe just because you're trying to lose weight you should cleanse. I think everybody should cleanse. Everybody should cleanse. I used to say back in the day once every six months. I have since then changed my protocol that you literally should cleanse every season. We should be doing some type of a cleanse where we really help to increase that fiber pull out extra toxicity out of the bowel. The bowel is a sponge. I don't know if you guys knew, knew that. But that's, it's like a sponge. So literally, what toxins do is they go and they hide inside the, uh, those little, uh, those little like spongy-like things of the bowel. I mean, they really need to wring that out. And one of the ways to do that is by cleansing on a regular basis. So that's really super important that we do that. And when I talk about cleanse, I'm talking about a bowel cleanse. Okay. I'm talking about bowel cleanses. I'm talking about really moving through that, that um, small intestine and that bowel itself. Then there's also the detox. That kind of what they were talking about earlier. And you've probably heard lots of people lately say, I need a detox. And detox is more blood and more liver oriented from chemical toxicity. So if you guys remember, I had you all fill out um, this little toxicity questionnaire. That's one of the reasons why I had you fill this out, to help determine if what you need to do is a cleanse or a toxicity uh, questionnaire. Um, that's to help decide which one we needed to do. We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight. So um, for all of you who had turned yours in, I, had, uh, I went ahead and I wrote some notes at the bottom to maybe kind of help guide you in what I think you might have to do. You may have to talk to more personally about it. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk real quick about cleanses first. So there are uh, two main cleanses that, well actually three, that we uh, work with in the Nature Sunshine program. And these are all bowel cleansers. So the Clean Start is really good for that person who doesn't eliminate every day and or only eliminates once a day. They have more of a sluggish constitution. They're more, more constipated than they are loose, per se. That, this is really good because it really focuses it on that bowel and it really helps to absorb those toxins from the sponge of the, um, of the colon walls and pull that out. With the Clean Start itself, what you do is you have three little pills and you have a little uh, powder mix that you do. All of my cleanses that I work with are, 14, are anywhere from 10 to 14 days. This particular one is a 14-day cleanse. And this is going to really help open up the bowels and get things moving more frequently, more thoroughly, and it's helping to help pull up those toxins as well, okay? There's also another one by Clean Start that's a, that's a mild. So maybe for that person who does eliminate a little bit more, but they want to work mainly on the bowel, the Clean Start Mild is what I would use. If you're already going twice a day, I would not do the regular Clean Start. You guys follow me? Mm -hmm. But those are the two that we really work on the bowel. And then there's a Tile Heat Cleanse. Now the Tile Heat Cleanse is also a bowel cleanser, but it also works with the liver. If you've had allergies, a high history of chemical toxicity, like from, uh, from uh, prescription drugs, things like that, 
This particular one may be the best one for you to start with. It is milder than the Clean Start. So if you've never cleansed before and you're a little scared, you may want to start with this one first, just to get your body used to it. Liver, 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 definitely. So with the Tauhi Cleanse, um, these actually come in little packets like this that you take before your meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And, uh, um, and this is a 10-day cleanse on this particular one. And remember, with these, all these toxins we're stirring up with doing the um, Inform program by eating more naturally, this is going to help pull those toxins out so they don't try to resettle in other fat cells in the body. So those are the two main cleanses, three, as I mentioned, that I work with. I also work with something called the Detox Basics. This is really good for that person who really wants just to work into a cleanse, but they want to start detoxing at a low level each day. And this is a, a product where you take berberine and sea and milk thistle, which is really good for the liver. Uh, this will also help the person who doesn't eliminate as frequently as well, but you can do one of these per day. So if you want to work into doing a cleanse, but you want to start moving some of those toxins out, this is a really good one to start off with. So those are our, our bowel cleansers, which I said before, we really need to concentrate on doing those every season. And when you've been doing the whole Inform program, I would say at about week three to week four, so some of you who just started, you wouldn't necessarily go out the door doing a cleanse right now if you're wanting to do a cleanse. You want to be doing the program three to four weeks before you really kind of start doing this. This will also help move your numbers faster. Cleansing actually increases your metabolism. Helps you burn more calories. And most everybody I worked with when I was downtown Austin, I would say 99.5% of everybody I worked with went home with a cleanse first. I've always known as a cleanse queen. That's, you know, that's one of the things that I've always been big on, is really, really educating people on paying attention to their bowel. And the reason I would do that, and the reason I would do that, yeah, Mary, yes, I'll, thank you. The reason I would do that is because most people would feel better on a cleanse. They would see, they would see a reaction within their body quicker. It was easier for me to keep clients because I would send them home with a cleanse, and even though they may not feel so great for a few days, they would come back and be like, hey, I got more energy, I feel better, I'm eliminating more frequently. And usually by then, then I could get them on their regular herbal program and we could get to the nitty gritty and what we were focusing on. But that's one of the reasons why I would cleanse with people is get them going. Mary Robichaud, um, who I pointed out before, um, who was 91, started cleansing when she was 50. Her mother was dealing with cancer. She realized at that time in her life that she needed to do something as a preventative and she learned about cleansing with Nature Sunshine. And so that woman has done cleanses on and off for the last 40 years. That's why she's 91, lives by herself, flies off, does all sorts of things all by herself, and does so well. is because she's literally focused on keeping her bowels clean. She would notice if she would slow up, she would do something about it. She wouldn't wait until three or four days later. She, know, she would do something right away. She always made sure she kept up with her bowels. Awareness of your bowels. Are you going to say something, Felicia? Um, I was wondering about the Yes. Yes, most people would still do both of them. We may slow up a little bit on your berberine and your hand form packet if you did this. Like for instance, you may do this for breakfast and then just do your uh, your uh, lunch and your dinner berberine only, um, since you're doing berberine in this also. But that berberine, not only does it help blood sugars, it really helps push out toxins. It really helps to get attach those toxins and bring them out. So that's why you would do that that way. So when you look at this toxicity questionnaire, if you had high numbers or if I wrote down on there, <coughs> that you needed to uh, work on, tox uh, on uh, detoxing first, then what you would want to do would be the Ultrabiome DTX. And for you former informers, this was used to be Purify. And they just changed the labeling and uh, put the D DTX on there for detox. This is what I started uh, a week ago today, along with Rejuvenate, which you saw a little bit about, which we're not going to talk about tonight. But 
This is excellent at helping to pull out heavy metals, chemical toxicity. If you've had a history of prescription drugs or you have prescription drugs you're taking out right now and you want to get rid of the residues of those, this is excellent. I have a lady I just heard back from yesterday in San Antonio. I've been working with her. Um, she's on seizure medication since I've been working with her. She was one of the ones who got off of the uh, blood pressure medication in the first uh, three weeks of being on Inform. Uh, but we've always been working on getting her off the seizure meds. That's been a little difficult. But what ended up happening is she started getting the side effects from that seizure med, which was intense itching on her head and our neck, on her, you know, just on her upper body, like intense itching. And it was a side effect from the drug. Well, we can't stop taking the seizure medication at this time. So what we did is we started, it was Purify, which is now DTX, along with a couple of other uh, herbs to really help pull out the residue of those toxins. And she told me yesterday, she's like, I, I went off my Purify for five days and now I'm itching again. So literally what we're doing with this product, product for her is we're getting rid of that toxin that that drug is putting off in her system. And we're getting it out instead of it recirculating in her body and trying to come out through her skin in the form of itching and rashes. Really, really good product to pull out heavy metals, chemicals, and it has L-glutamine in it. L-glutamine is an amino acid. We'll learn more about those next week. But it actually repairs the gut lining. Um, and so it really helps to repair that gut from leaky gut as well. But really, really great product. So some people who have a more hot, uh, a toxicity going on, they may actually have to uh, do this first and then cleanse later. If your bowels aren't moving daily, you don't want to start this first. Because we're going to get in there, we're going to attach to all these, all these chemicals, but then you don't have an exit out, that's not good. So that's what we need to look at when you decide moving forward with your inform program. What's best, to detox or to cleanse? Just depends on where your bowel situation is at. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to cover that bowel situation tonight so that way we knew what our options were. Any questions? On the other handout that I had given you guys to fill out the weight management assessment form, if you can get down here to number four, and you have high numbers in number four under cleansing digestion, then you may that that would actually tell you you need to actually do more of a, a cleansing first before you do the detox. Who is that one? Oh, we don't need it. No, I uh, oh, I think I gave it to you with a stack of stuff. I think <laughs> maybe. If not, you can have this one. But please be sure to fill these out for me tonight, and make sure you hand them in in the inbox in the back. And that way I can be a little bit more up on what's going on with your particular body as well when it comes to these different areas. And also help you make a determination what kind of detox you need to do. How does that ultra biome compare to just purify? Same thing. Same new thing? packaging. Same oh. thing, new packaging. Okay. Yeah. So it's the same as purify. Yeah. The, yeah. The company was seeing, I was using it a lot, recommending it to my clients because I understood it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people weren't able to understand it from the packaging before. So they increase the packaging to make it look more like a detox, because that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, so it's the same thing as a purify. It's no okay. different. Just a prettier package, okay. more specific. But you'll help me, because no, but you know we need to do You bet. You bet. That's why I gave you the questionnaires, because that's going to help me help you. Yes. Did you find it? Uh, okay. Here, you can have this one. Okay. So the other thing you guys need to make sure you fill out for me tonight, of course, is your weekly inform checklist. This is where your numbers were at. Make sure you put these in your book or on your extra piece of paper that you have, these numbers that we did tonight. Fill out your answers for me before you leave and turn these in the inbox before you leave. So I need to make sure I have a copy of this from everybody tonight. Questions? Okay. Uh, I think I only have one more thing to cover. Actually, two more things. Let's do this first. So let's go ahead. Oh, by the way, when you do the cleansing, I have specific instructions for you to follow. Uh, my copier ran out of ink for some reason tonight, even though I got a new ink cartridge, I'm not really sure why. But anyways, I will make sure you guys have copies of that and or I will attach them to your emails that I send to follow up with this particular, uh, this particular week's module, okay? 
So make sure that you understand I've got specific cleansing instructions for everybody. Page number 30. So we want to set a SMART goal for the week. And it would be nice if it could be something that would center around reducing your toxicity. Whether you work on changing some personal care items, which change up some uh, uh, cleaning agents, or, or maybe looking at your foods, trying to buy more organically or sustainably grown, whatever it may be. But you want to set your SMART goal for the week. Of course, we want to reread module number two. I just, excuse me, three. I skim over that. I don't go through it. There may be important information in there that may work for you. So be sure that for your homework, you reread yeah. number three. We're going to minimize our exposure to toxins, and we're going to start a cleanse or a clean start. That's only if you're in the week three or four of your program. Ethan, did you have a question? Okay, all right. <laughs> okay. And of course, exercise. We want to keep moving and grooving. Let's remember that we need to be tracking our steps. Making sure we're getting more movement in, taking the stairs to the elevator, doing whatever we can to increase our movement. It's very important because you know what else movement does for us? Makes us poop. That's true. That's not what I was thinking, but that's true. <laughs> Anybody else know what else it does? Lose weight. It helps to stir up those toxins and reduce those toxins and get them eliminated, especially when you sweat. Okay. So get your sweat on. <laughs> All right. Last thing that I want to tell you guys about real quick, uh, for those of you who have signed up with Nature Sunshine, uh, I just want to let you know the special benefits that come along with being a member with Nature Sunshine. Of course, we have our option over here at Pearson's on Mondays. Anybody who's been an informer gets 15% off all Nature Sunshine products on Mondays. Um, there's some other options too for discounts that we shared already previously. But for those of you who have a new membership with Nature Sunshine, this is a handout that shows you some of the other benefits, such as getting $15 off your first order or next order, 20% or $20 off of an order within 30 days. Anyways, there's all sorts of things on here. So I want to make sure that you guys have a chance to look at this. And if this pertains to you, then we're good to go. I don't know if you need another re recap on that, Lynn. Give that to you guys. find me quite frequently texting you when there are Nature Sunshine specials going on. I, I pretty much do that as much as I possibly can. I really like to see you guys get the most out of your program as possible. And if you can save a few bucks and make sure you get on the product and the program with it, then I'll, I'll make sure that I, I'm letting you guys know so you can do that. Any questions, guys? Good class? Cover everything pretty good? Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Well, let's work on reducing our toxic exposure this week. Let's continue uh, following our meal plan, getting some exercise. If you have any questions about product after the class tonight, please feel free to ask me. And we are going to make some cherry smoothies with a little bit of greens in it tonight. So I'll get started on those as soon as we wrap it up here. So I thank everybody for being here tonight. Week number four, next week, is one of my favorite ones. It's all about protein. The importance of protein is next week. So please be sure you can attend and learn about why protein is so important. And we will cover that next week. So have a healthy week, and I'll see you then.